Hi, I'm Ruth Murchbear and welcome to Out of the Dark Room on Adorama TV. Today I'm in the National Portrait Gallery in London and I'm going to be chatting to Laura Panic. She's a social documentary and portrait photographer and at such a young age has won so many prestigious awards, including one here at the Taylor Wessing Photographic Portrait Prize. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medjbear. Laura, thanks so much for, for joining us today and taking time out of your, what I assume is an amazingly busy schedule. You kind of let's fly pretend. around doing, let's pretend. It is, I know it is. I know it's extremely busy. You're shooting everything. I mean, you have so many commissions and then you're up to date with your personal work and then you've got a, a weekly blog and it just seems that you are so productive. You're putting everyone else to shame. All a facade. Is it? Yeah, it's totally. a very good one. It's extremely good. It's total facade. So, do you find a balance between your personal work and your commissions? Like, do, is that important to you to maintain like the amount of workload you do is quite equal, or do you have a favourite or what, what? Yeah, I think like um, to keep myself sane, I yeah. have to keep my personal work going, um, and also it kind of it, your your commissioned work is so well. My commissioned work is so in, like unpredictable. Right. So I never really know what's going to happen from one day to the next. So like it's kind of like in terms of the jobs that come in. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no consistency. Whereas with my personal work, I'm kind of in control of that consistency. Okay. So I can set the dates. I can set more yeah. or less the times when I'm going to dedicate my time to that. And actually, like the majority of my personal work is just research based. Oh, so okay. I'm spending a hell of a lot of time just behind a computer or Reading. meeting people yeah. or listening to things or watching things. So I, I can kind of fit those balances in because I am predominantly shoot with natural light. So yeah. I can kind of shoot during the day. And so, so when you're doing, um, say your personal work and you're doing a, a hell of a lot of research and stuff like that, how do you normally find what it is that you want to shoot? I mean, is it just through web or is it, how, how does that come about? I think like, um, um, like everything in photography it's instinct yeah um and then i think it's also from that instinct comes intrigue and curiosity and if i feel like something's challenging me and yeah. like really challenging me then i kind of push it further and further oh, I see. and the irony is is that i am the most impatient person like i'm That's so bad yeah. but like when it comes to personal work i just have to be tenacious about it and i have to kind of find ways around things and kind of problem solve and be patient and that's probably because I'm reliant on other people for my personal work. I need subjects within my work. I'm often exploring subjects that I don't understand. Yeah, so okay. it would be really ignorant of me to turn down a personal project and not explore something further if I didn't fully understand it. And then through gaining that knowledge and understanding, you ultimately do become more interested in something. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't really kind of like give up or not give up on ideas. It's not like a clear cut decision. Mm. It's more kind of going through those gray zones like any writer does when you have writer's yeah. block and you're kind of pulling at strings and you go through that very depressing, self-deprecating stage of like, oh my God, what am I gonna do with my life? <laughs> um, and, and then, you know, suddenly you just, you become a little bit inspired by something and you kind of follow that path and if it leads somewhere, great. And if it doesn't, you kind of find another way. Basically, I'm still exploring. I mean, I've been doing it over a year and I'm still using about five different mediums and exploring, you know, three different ways of working. Really? So, yeah, because I think that it's important not to kind of like, be so directive and limit your options okay. and I think that actually by working in so many different ways there's an opportunity for me to learn new skills and possibly push my you know my technique and my approach and my understanding of photography in a new direction so I don't know I, I kind of well I think like I, like the people that inspire me like David Hockney and people like that yeah. they're, they're kind of like they're just they're playing and that's what photography is yeah. you know it's just kind of like being creative and mm. having fun so but yet you have a very defined style I think um, maybe it is to do to, to do with the natural lighting that you use but I think you, like just looking through all your images and I would very clearly know what one is yours so mm. how is that something that you shoot with in mind then or no do you know happen? it's something that like people like students often say to me like I'm trying to find my style yeah. and I'm trying and it's like something that is like completely alien to me because um, I guess that like so I, I came up with this metaphor recently that I Lay think kind of me. fits quite well <laughs> Here we go. so I think that your style or kind of like your creative style anyway for me it's kind of like either my handwriting or my voice oh, okay. um, it's personal and it's not really something that I can control it just comes, it just out, comes out and it's a way that I communicate it's a way that I express myself and yeah. I can alter it and I can kind of learn new ways of speaking and yeah. learn new ways of writing but ultimately, it's my signature, and it's kind of like, 
And, and you, you know, it's just a method. It's just a tool yeah. of communicating and just a way of expressing yourself. And I don't think that there should be limits on that either, yeah. you know. How about people, though? You know, if, if you were to just kind of sit in front of a person and it's, it's either a commission or a personal project to go and take their portrait, yeah. how much of them then, could, you know, changes the way that you're shooting them? Do you Hugely. Hugely. Yeah. So, like, do you listen to them? How, how does that happen? Because what I'm thinking of uh, in particular is the images that you have of the young boys and there is no inhibitions there with those boys. And normally when you go photographing adolescent men, they are so nervous and a bit gawky and they don't really want to be in front of your camera but there's none of that with your shots they are so relaxed in front of your lens that you, you see that straight away so how do you almost disarm someone and then let their character come through what's your process I don't think there's kind of like a tool or a secret trick or a way of working but I do think that like empathy and vulnerability is a huge part of my work yeah. and I think that by allowing yourself as a photographer to be the more vulnerable one you're empowering the person that you're photographing so mm -hmm. if that person and kind of feels in control or they feel particularly confident yeah. even if they don't necessarily feel that way most of the time yeah. you know you're, you're allowing that space and that opportunity for them to kind of collaborate with you and make that image because you can't take a portrait on your own do you know what I mean you yeah, need absolutely. that other it's, person it's but a lot of it is direction that's the thing you know I wish that I could kind of like just you know, you say to people, do whatever you want, yeah. just, you know, be whoever. And But a lot of the time, you know, as a creative, you're kind of like, yeah, but I really like that yeah, light. Yeah. You're or the you... one with the style and you're the one with the camera, so you have to. So you would direct people in a certain way. Yeah, I think there's like, what I've discovered recently is going back to earlier work, that I kind of have two methods of working. Mm -hmm. And one of them is, um, comes, I guess, from more of a documentary background where you're observing and then selecting your moments or seeing things that inspire you and then kind of going, wow, you know, I yeah. need to grab that. And and then the other ones are the very, very predefined kind of images where, you know, I'll wake up in the middle of the night because I've had a dream and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I need to sketch that. And then I've, you know, I've got hundreds of notebooks under my bed, just of stupid crap yeah. drawings of things that I want to do. And I'm like, right, I want this light. I want this subject. I want it in this country. I want them wearing this. Yeah. I want, do you know what I mean? And I don't really want to kind of like just take one path or the other because I think it's quite refreshing for a viewer yeah. to kind of see that. Um, in your work and you kind of like those two processes. So you amalgamate kind of, both of them yeah, and shoot from there. Tell me then maybe a bit about your camera and, and, and what you use. I mean, do you shoot film or do you shoot digital or, or what's your game? Yeah, well, I mean, it goes back again to um, the idea of personal work and commissions. I mean, I'm very lucky, like weirdly, um, I've grown up with film because my dad's a photographer. So I kind of spent my childhood in the dark rooms yeah. in the studios. Um, and my education, thankfully, was all on analog as well. Okay. Um, so I left with a pure passion for analog and I still have it and I'm like analog till I die. Um, but then again, you know, the advancement of digital is amazing. Yeah, I'll true. never, ever let go of analog. And yeah. it's definitely my preferred way of shooting. But economically, it's you just not possible. Else. And it's also just risk. You know, I, I am embrace that risk and I love the fact that mistakes equal beauty yeah. um, but a client necessarily a client wants wouldn't want you taking that no. risk when they've spent maybe you know a couple of thousand setting yeah. up a location so. exactly as soon as I picked up a camera like I totally knew I was just you like just I, I want to die doing this I was like I just I totally fell at, like head over heels for it and that was really lucky yeah like not many people kind of just know what they want yeah know what they want to do so mm. I guess the advice that I could only give would just be to um, to not isolate yourself like oh. I think that actually like the majority of ways in which my photography has developed and how I've grown up as a person have been down to my influences my inspiration do you want great looking prints at low cost be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.